What's going on guys? And welcome to the segment I like to call Chopping It Up with the Karate Hattie. Is that good? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> That's exactly what they want. This is my friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> Noemi. She's been my friend for as long as I've lived in New Mexico. So. Yeah, it's been um, quite some time. Yeah, so she she's like one of the first person people that I told that I was pregnant with Rhea, and now she has a little one of her own. Yeah. Um, Noemi also is an amazing cook, um, and she was my teammate before she had uh, before she had Easton. Uh, she was she fought. For boxing, did you do boxing and kickboxing? Boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. And MMA. Mm -hmm. Well, oh my gosh, really? Mm -hmm. How many MMA friends? I already you had two. Okay. And then I had Easton. I was like, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> gosh, it's been so long. I know. Okay, so Noemi, every time I get into fight camp, preps my meal. So she actually owns a company here locally in Albuquerque. So if you need somebody to help you prep any of your meals. This is the lady to go to. So all her information is going to be in the information below. So if you need somebody to help out with your meal preps, she has it all set for you. Um, and um, I, I love your stuff because I don't have to think about it. It's just prepped and I know that it's healthy. I know that it's homemade. Mm -hmm. And she always gives me a variety of foods. And I think a lot of times the, the problem people run into when they're when they're trying to live a better, healthier lifestyle, is that um, they it's get boring. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they get bored. It's the same thing. They just always chicken rice and broccoli, or you know, a protein and carbohydrate, and you know. But it doesn't have to be boring. A vegetable? No, definitely not. It doesn't have to be boring. Mm -hmm. So, um, what are we cooking today? So today we're gonna do one of my favorites because we are from New Mexico. So everybody loves the red chili, and they love enchiladas. So we're doing my healthier version of. Um, beef red chili enchiladas. Beef red chili enchiladas. Yes. So you like red chili or green chili? I like them both. You like them mm -hmm. both? I'm but, with like, the, but with beef? With beef I love red. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. And then with green? What, chicken. Chicken? Yeah. Or pork? What about both. Yeah, both. I know, but I'm not. I don't know why I'm not really into pork enchiladas. Really? Mm -mm. I'll do like a chili verde. Okay. That would be good. Okay. Alright, so since we're going with pork. Oh. No, we're going with beef. <laughs> Okay. okay. Since we're going <laughs> <laughs> recent. <laughs> Since we're going with beef, my friends from Butcher Box have sponsored this video and they are they have the absolute best meat. So we're gonna use their 100 percent grass-fed ground beef right here. And this stuff is the best. And I love Butcher Box because all their stuff is 100 percent organic, grass-fed, and even grass-finished. They have, you know, um, any all the antibiotics are all out of there. They don't have any growth hormones. Um, so they're humanly, humanely raised, and all of that stuff is really important. What, what, what do you I think? agree, yes, definitely. Well, like, I, I, like, I like local because all the, like, you don't need any added preservatives and additives in the stuff that you could be putting into your body. Mm -hmm. You like it clean, you like it simple, that's how I like my food. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you are what you eat. So if your cow eats preservatives and and bad and foods, yeah, then, then you you are as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Well, so Noemi says that this entire meal can be made in twenty minutes. in under twenty minutes. It's super easy. Super easy. You're just using cabbage instead of tortillas. I mean, come on. That's it. Simple. That's the only. That's replacement. the only difference. That's the only replacement in this meal. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. Okay. So first thing we need to do is prep the cabbage. So you just get a cabbage. This is all I do, it's super easy. So I just cut it down the middle and you see the core? We need to take that core out. No, why me is like the freaking best of doing fast things. So yes, she says I'm 20, super, yeah. <laughs> she says 20, but I'm gonna say 30. Yes. I'm gonna say 30 minutes. So I just cut, cut the triangle and then you take the core out. And what I like to do is also is cut this in quarters. Then the white part in here. Um, you can, what I like to do, so you don't waste it, I like to chop this up finely and then put it to the side of the fridge so you can add it to your salads. You can, you can make a cabbage slaw. Like a coleslaw. Yep. But you don't use that for this. You don't use it for this. Okay. So, in there it goes. So once it starts turning green, it's the stuff you want to keep. 
Yes, it's just because it, it, it lays better mm -hmm. as a tortilla. Mm -hmm. And does it still, like, is it, does it still satisfy the way? I think so. It, mm -hmm. and, but also, to me, it depends all about the chili. Yeah, like, that's true. Mm -hmm. If you have really good red chili, which I will show you guys a little bit how to make, that makes, like, all the difference. Okay, and so you just need one head of cabbage. Just one head of cabbage. You know what? So for a small casserole dish. First, this, so, is a sm okay. this is the size right here. How much does this feed? This will fit, this could feed like five people. Five people? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, one time I sent Josh to get um, some lettuce and he brought back <laughs> cabbage. I don't doubt it. <laughs> but men, for real, men. Like, you guys make sure like when you're picking up your stuff like to this. read it. To read. Yeah. To read. So we're just going to separate. And then we're going to walk this over to a pot of boiling water. And we need to boil it so they soften. And what's this thing right here? It's my little garbage bowl. Okay. From Rachel Ray. Well, she, I got all my like little tricks I'll be showing you. Keep this to the side. Do not back and forth to the trash. Thank you, Rachel Ray. Yes. Another later. tool I'll be showing you in a minute. Okay. Okay, so this we're gonna be walking to, to boil. To boil. Okay. All right. All right, so we have our cabbage. Let's put it into the pot. So you already had the pot boiling? Already had the pot boiling. Okay. And you have two pots boiling though. Yes, one this is for the one is for the cabbage and the other one is for the red chili pods that we'll be showing you guys a little bit later. And you can make the red chili within 20 minutes too? Oh the red chili takes no time. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause some I know it's hard to make the like good red chili. It depends on where you get your chili pods, mm -hmm. I think. Let me turn that up a little bit. All right, so you gotta have the, the water boiling. Have the water boiling just so it's already hot and it won't take forever. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna take about five, maybe eight minutes okay. to get pliable. We just want them to be a little um, softer. All right, so we got the cabbage cooking, but I forgot to go over like just a checklist of all the things that you need to have prepped for your red chili enchiladas. Okay, so the grocery list will be, obviously when you, the ground beef, okay. one pound, that's a good about, that's a, Good for about four to five people. Okay. Some cheese, you know, because enchiladas. <laughs> a little bit of salt, a little bit of garlic. Um, here I show you guys some red chili pods because um, I like to make my red chili from the pods, fresh, which I usually do beforehand. I always have red chili on me and I make a lot of extra and I keep it in the freezer. How long does it last? Oh, if you have, like, if you just have it, like, in the fridge, it'll probably last about, I'd say about maybe eight to ten days mm -hmm. and in the freezer up, you know about probably like six months as long as it's sealed tight really mm -hmm. okay then we need an onion right here some garlic and what i like to do i like lettuce and tomato for garnish mm -hmm. and what i really like to use is heirloom tomatoes because you're going to eat it raw and it's just so much more flavor it's like sweeter so i definitely go with the heirloom so if you can so heirloom for garnish always Always, I just love it because it's sweeter. You're tasting it raw and it just has good flavor. All right, and then of course, obviously what we're missing is the cabbage, which, which is, is one of the main things of the enchiladas and which is what replaces the flour. Mm -hmm. The tortilla. And, and you know what I notice when I eat your, your enchiladas um, is that Sometimes when I have normal enchiladas, I go into a food coma afterward mm -hmm. and I feel like I can't <laughs> yeah. eat, I can't do anything for like the next four hours. But with yours, I still I still get that satisfaction of like the spice and the beef and the heartiness of like um like kind of like a family cooked meal without feeling the grog. Like it's all heavy. Yeah, like well, it's heavy. Um well I, I and another thing too is I don't put a lot of cheese in mm -hmm. mine. You know, like you layer it, when you layer it, you put cheese, layer it, put cheese. I only put cheese on the top mm -hmm. just to keep it keeps the calories and the fat down and it still gives me the satisfaction of having cheese. Mm -hmm. Like you can do whatever you want. You can do extra cheese or a little amount of cheese, but I just like less cheese. Okay. I count my macros and I like to have my stuff and I like to get my fats so, somewhere else. else. And then the same, <laughs> with, same with the carbs, like the, yeah, I'd rather have it, save it for something else, like a slice of pizza or something if I can, mm -hmm. than, than in the inches. Yeah, because you're like, I'd rather have cabbage mm -hmm. than the pizza. Yep. It's not worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, okay. Well, I was just talking to you about this off camera because Aurea loves tomatoes, but there's also, there's so many kinds and I never know what kind to get. Like, so when, when you're making these enchiladas, you like to get the heirloom, but mm -hmm. like, what about like when you're making salsas? Cause that, that's fresh. the salsas. I can, I would go with an heirloom too. You can do that. But I like just the, the vine ripened tomatoes. Okay. The ones that are off the vine. Mm -hmm. Those work good. And I like to, um, 
put them in the broiler mm -hmm. just to to like, like roast it kind mm -hmm. of okay. oh and it's so good so like you could because heirloom tomatoes are expensive yes like this typically is like three to four dollars just one tomato mm -hmm. so if you okay. can in so, other places so heirloom for garnish i love heirloom uh, for garnish. buying for salsa salsa um what about italian roma, food i like using the roma tomatoes because i make like a really good pesto mm -hmm. chicken and then i put roasted tomato on top and i always go with the roma if i'm mm -hmm. making fresh spaghetti sauce i go with roma mm -hmm. okay what about those are like typically the three that i use yeah because right now i can't think oh ones. grape tomatoes i love those in salads mm -hmm. Gotta have them. Yeah, already just pops them like mm -hmm. they can. They're so good and they like pop in your mouth and all mm -hmm. juicy and sweet. Mm -hmm. Delicious. All right, so you guys got all the ingredients there and what Noemi's gonna do is for this exact meal, she's going to include all the macros. Um, and I was talking to her about this when she started her company because I feel like you are in better shape now than, than when you were fighting. I know, do crazy, you feel that? right? Mm -hmm. And why is, do you think it's because we're fighting or do you think it's just when you're fighting you have other things to worry about or do you think it's just because you've taken the time to not, like give yourself the knowledge of nutrition? Of, um, I think that's what it is. Like mm -hmm. I eat for me, mm -hmm. my body type, like how much I should be consuming, like mm -hmm. my protein, my fats, my carbs, fiber, all that jazz. So I think that is why. And I literally like, you know, fighting, we're working out like six days a week you know three four hours a day and i literally now work out four hours a week and that is it yeah and so it's it's crazy to me because it's all i'm telling you every, it's all it's, in your diet it's all it's all in the kitchen mm -hmm. everything yeah but i just for me like i get stressed out trying to prep and think about all the food no i know and you don't have the you don't have the time mm -hmm. like it's it's overwhelming mm -hmm. how much you know before and the reason and when i first started the business it was strictly paleo Mm -hmm. that's all I did and I like it was so hard because I I, I walk around like at 140 but yeah. I fought at 125 yeah. and then I even tried to fight at 115 it sucked but paleo did it for me I was just eating constant just paleo all so the time so you just shifted mm -hmm. on to just to doing that all the time that's all I did mm -hmm. and then you know because that's what was the craze when the, you know like when my company first came out mm -hmm. and then you know clean eating the whole 30 and then keto and then now I started, I started my macros, uh, Easton's going to be four, I don't know, like two and a half years ago, I'd say. And I've been consistent with it, but I like now because I don't have to, it's, not, it's just a lifestyle. Like yes. I don't have to, I can eat pretty much whatever I want mm -hmm. as long as it's within my macros. And you input your macros every day? In my fitness pal. Every really? day. Mm -hmm. See, that's the hard part for me. Yeah. And I know like, cause Steve, who is my strength and conditioning coach, always oh, tells me, well. yes, he always tells me like, you're on your phone so much during the day. <laughs> yeah. Like look at your Instagram, look at your YouTube, all that stuff. And he's like, it will literally take you a minute to input your stuff, you know, once you get the hang of it. It does. It takes about, it took me about two weeks because I was like ugh, tracking food, weighing your foods. It's mm -hmm. like a pain mm -hmm. in the ass. But what I do is when I'm going to bed, when I'm laying down in bed, I think of what I'm eating the next day. Mm -hmm. So I already have in my macros, what I'm doing the next day, and then I leave a, I leave room just in case something changes. Well, because Noemi is I'm obsessed. Noemi is obsessed with food because she, she that's what she, not very many people lay down like hmm what am I gonna eat tomorrow? <laughs> I literally that's what I do and it helps me so much. Yeah, but so <laughs> so now you gotta dream of your of food what you're gonna yeah. eat the next day. But that makes sense because uh, well, talk to Noemi. She says, okay, well I already mapped it out today. Like we we, we um, had a girls' night out. She said she already. Um, input her drinks so that she could so she kind of ate a little bit more healthy so she could have a couple of drinks mm -hmm. when we had the girls night out and so i think that's a, that that'll be my next step it's, it's hard no believe me it's hard it's a pain but once you get like literally once you get it then it's okay so easy it's like so, nothing so my fitness pal is what mm -hmm. it is and we'll put that link down below as well and and she'll have all the information for these macros. And what I love about her meals actually is she puts a label on the top of what it is, and within the label it shows all the things you need to input. Mm -hmm, the calorie, yep, yeah, it does have it. Cause on the fitness pal it has the quick app so you can put your calories, the carbs, the protein, and the fats. So awesome. it's easy. The cabbage is still cooking. 
While you're cooking the cabbage is when you chop up the, uh, the onion. When we chop it up an onion. And what, what's the difference between this onion, white onion, red onion, green onion? Oh. Do you know? I'm not really, truthfully, <laughs> not really sure. <laughs> but you like to use this I just yellow love onion. The yellow they're onion, They're sweeter, yeah. aren't they? No, no? they're not. I like these because I love onion. They're like a lot more potent. Oh, they're, they're stronger? Yes. I love onion. Like I, girl, my mom told me that I would eat onions like apples. When no! I was Crazy. Holly hates onions. I know. But she'll still still eat this. Because well, I cook it down? Because I cook it down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So let's, we're going to chop this up. Okay, so a life hack here. Is yeah, but this, I like, I know I'm probably not holding this the way it's supposed to be held. Like I'm probably going to cut my finger. This is an onion. This is how you cut onions, y'all. You cut it in half and then you leave it intact on one side. That way everything stays in place while you're chopping it up. That's correcto. There we go. Boom. Okay, let's put this in this bowl. Okay, so you only need half the onion. Yeah, yeah, you can do a full onion if you want. You don't even need a whole half of onion. You can do a quarter, but I like, you like lots onion. of onion. Mm -hmm. So, Ooh, I know, strong. they are strong. Okay, so we cut the onion up. So we're gonna cut the onion up, and then we're gonna go saute it in a pan with the ground beef and a little bit of garlic. Okay. All right, so we have our pan on. I like, like, medium high. Some olive oil. And what I say about a tablespoon. You 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 use olive oil or do you use olive oil? Olive oil. I use all, oh sorry, this is avocado oil. So that's what we're using today. You can use avocado oil. You can uh, I would say avocado oil or E V O O because uh -huh. coconut oil you have that taste of you it. You can taste it, huh? Yeah, I'd rather not um use make, those make your enchiladas like, taste like coconut. coconut. We're gonna add our onions. Let's see, I need a little something over here. Here we go. Move those around a bit. And so when you're cooking the onion, you cook it all the way down? I don't, like for this, you don't have to cook it all the way down because it is still gonna bake okay. in the oven. So, now this take, you know, about a minute or so. And then we're gonna put the- Ground beef. We're gonna put the butcher box, 100% grass fed. So people get confused because Sometimes when you go grocery shopping, it says grass fed, but it's not grass finished. <clears throat> and so what that means is that they grass, it's grass fed at the beginning, but to fatten up the cow at the end, they'll, they'll feed them the corn and the grains, which isn't good for the cow. You know, so when you when you're shopping, they like for, to trick you. Yeah, they'll trick you. So when you're shopping for your meat, you have to make sure that it's grass fed, 100% grass fed and grass finished. And so you're not putting Good any seasoning. Know. Not yet. No seasoning yet. No, we're gonna get to that in just a second. I'm just trying to um, break up the meat a little bit. <laughs> All right. So next, we're gonna get a couple cloves of garlic. All right, so the, the meat is cooking with the onion right now. Right. So now we're going to use this handy thing. And that's a, is that a cheese grater? It's, a, it's a, a zester. A zester. Yes, because I'm not very good at chopping. Mm -hmm. Small little thing. Yeah, so. She don't have the patience. Mm -mm. That's what it so is. So what we're going to do is we're going to zest it Ooh. into the meat. And then I also like using granulated garlic and then some salt. Does so, it matter what kind of salt? What kind of salt do you I use? I like, my favorite is the Himalayan pink yeah. salt. I, do I just love the way it tastes. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot more minerals in it. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, you can use table salt, it's totally fine, whatever you prefer. And you can use, you know, the um, garlic salt. What, so what's the difference but between I like, garlic salt and garlic powder? Well, because the garlic salt has salt added to it. Uh. And I like to use it separate because then I know how much salt I'm adding to my food. Yes. Yep. Okay. So if you can grab those, All right. and we'll head to the meat. You know a lot of people try to stay away from, like they'll cut salt out of their diet completely. Is that good or bad? Uh, I think it depends on like, I think mo a lot of people do it because their doctor tells them they have to. Uh -huh. But the good thing about my meals, like it is very low in sodium. Like it, it has like, I ch it's like 250 to 500 milligrams yeah. per meal. I think that, I, I think so. a lot of, um, oh. Zesting. Okay, so instead of chopping it, you zest it. Mm -hmm. I got this hack from Rachel Ray. From Rachel Ray? She got all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. 
I think the reasons why doctors will tell people to stay away from the salt is because a lot of um, a lot of some garlic salt processed like processed mm -hmm. stuff. Oh, so much salt has salt. A lot of fast food stuff has salt. And so this is salt to taste, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably putting like a about a teaspoon in there, a maybe teaspoon? a little bit more. Okay. But it, I, if you get the right salt, it's actually good for you, like mm -hmm. you said. Like Himalayan salt has good minerals mm -hmm. in it that your body actually does need, especially if you're an athlete. Because when you sweat so yes. much, you, you your body is releasing all of those minerals that your body needs to stay hydrated. So it actually is important to have some type of salt intake. It just has to be the right type of salt. To close the garlic, half of like, an onion, pound of ground beef, um, salt, and garlic and salt. To taste. And salt to taste. Yes. Okay. Smelling good. Yeah. Okay, the next is we're going to be taking the cabbage out of the water. Okay. So, we're going to let this brown up for just a few more minutes. And this is looking good. I think you just need a commercial. Typically, you would you, you probably. You need a good blender for this. You definitely need a good blender for this, especially if you're not letting them um, boil as much as I said that you should. <laughs> but that's all right. It'll still turn out good. And then now we're gonna get the juice or the water of, I'm just gonna do two labels for right now. And then we'll see how that goes. Fresh garlic right here. Bam. Fresh garlic and also like granulated garlic. Just whatever, however much you want salt to taste, then let's blend this bad boy up. I'm gonna put it on my Instagram over here. Can I, can well, I see? I'll open it in just a second. I just want this shit going all over the place. This thick, or do you want it to be a little bit more runny? Um, let me see. Because then we can just add a little bit more of yeah, the water. Yeah, let's add a little bit more water. Okay, let's take it off. Oh! This is and making red chili is very messy if you're clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Well, thank mm. goodness, Tom. That's good. All right. So. And you can just do it to taste if you want more salt. Yep. And then I'm just gonna put this on high. And then we can pour it into, she just pours it into a container, Tupperware, whatever, and we are good to go. Now she has a mess to clean up. Get a strainer with a bowl. Sometimes I see them- Let's take all this out. Put the cabbage like in a bath, like cold water. Oh, you can do that just so it, it stops them, stops the cooking process so they're, they don't get so um, mushy. Uh-huh. But these, you could, I can, just by filling them, they're not, I didn't overcook them, so I mean, if you forget about them, then yes, uh -huh. go ahead and do that. But you don't have to. Red chili. Look how bright and red that is. That is. That's like some good chili. chili. Let me taste this. Let me taste that chili. Go for it. Woo! I can't believe that's the only season you put in there. I know. And also like the red chili has salt and garlic in it. That's why you don't really have to season um, your ground beef as much either, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So there's that. So you just pour how much ever you want. Uh-huh, that's it, you turn it off. And now we can build 
our enchiladas. Mm. All right, and we're back. So, avocado spray. Just a little spray, just so it doesn't stick. Okay. All righty. Our so first lovely layer. Lovely mixture. So you do meat for the first layer. I just put meat at the bottom, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. I want to taste it. Well, you can get a fork, girl. Get it. And then we're gonna have our cabbage, and see, we're just gonna lay it. So normally this would be a. These would be tortillas. Tortillas. What kind of tortillas? Corn. Corn. You tortillas. corn flour. And there's these one tortillas that I really like to use. They're, they're the extra thin, so they're less in carbs. Mm. I go. I know. Okay, so no cheese. Well, I'll, I'll put cheese. Them. I'll put. Do you guys want some cheese? Because cheese you're gonna, is optional, guys. You're so. gonna keep this for yourself. You want me to no, make it cheesy? No, it's okay. But what? Well, what no, I'm it will say, be cheese at the very top, though. The hell, if you want to make it healthier, you just only put cheese at the top. Mm -hmm. But it's totally customizable. You could put cheese in between the layers if you want. Yes. But you don't have to. No. And honestly, like, like I've had this before, and it's not. You don't even miss it, really. Oh my gosh, my doggies. I love. I made one last night, which will be t be taken out of the oven in just a few. And I can't wait to eat it. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> so one more layer. And these don't have to be perfect. They're not, I mean, it's all gonna be eaten anyways. <laughs> you know? So just this throw my, it on. My mom used to tell me like, if I would look at food that looked weird, she, she'd be like, the food to eat, put in your mouth, not to look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, you know how that goes. Especially when it's like somebody else is cooking, you oh, can't well. be rude. We just put the rest of our red chili beef mixture. Okay. Mmm. I know. So good. And then, just the top layer. I like to put some cheese. What kind of cheese? This is just shredded like um, Mexican treat cheese, like mm -hmm. a Mexican blend. I think it's like Colby and something. But you know. do use that almond cheese. I do use almond milk cheese because a lot of people are like with my customers are dairy free. Mm -hmm. So I will use that on these, but you can use any kind of cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And voila, there you go. So that that's was super it. easy. Yeah. So all we do is foil it. Aurea could have made that. She should. She should have made that. She should. Can okay. you? So all we do is foil it and then we're going to stick it in the oven. And this will take about at 350 about 25 minutes 25 minutes yes so this is also a meal that you could you can prep, prep beforehand, beforehand mm -hmm. which i will show you i made one last night and we're gonna we're gonna take it out of the oven right now because it's ready oh that's See? the big that is it so 25 minutes in the oven and then broil i like to broil for like two minutes just to like get it extra bubbly at the very top all right our enchiladas are ready let's go ahead and pull them out Oh, don't those look delish. Oh, well, yep. And mm. voila. And what you want to do is let them rest mm. about 10 minutes because it's like a lasagna. Whenever you cut it, it'll just fall apart. So you don't want it to fall apart. It's still bubbling. Oh, it's so good. That so looks... good, right? Look how delicious that looks. All right, guys. So let it rest for about 10 minutes before you cut into it. But what I like to do is garnish with a tomato. The heirloom tomato. That's, that's like two dollars that you just cut off right I there. I know, but what you could- I'm gonna taste it. Taste it. So just, <laughs> Araya, I'm chopping these for Araya. She asked me to keep them for her. So I like, um. It almost does taste like fruit. It's so good. So tomatoes, mm. a little bit of lettuce, and then you can also use chopped onion, a dollop of non-fat Greek yogurt, which would be amazing. And what I really love, having these next day for breakfast Eggs. with a fried egg. Eggs, baby. I mean, you can't, it's delicious. And that is my um, healthy beef and gelatas. Oh, and also, <laughs> sorry, you don't have to just use beef. I use ground turkey um, usually, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to do green, um, chili, I don't really like it with cabbage, but I would say use zucchini. Really? Just it makes slice a them. Difference? I, it does. Really? I don't like, I, don't, I just, I mean, pre my preference, I don't like the taste of the cabbage with green chili chicken okay. enchiladas. So weird. One more thing that you're telling me about oh. popping this in the oven. Oh, yes, because you know, sometimes when you have to put, when you have to foil it, mm -hmm. 
like the foil sticks. Like when you put it in, and you do that, like the foil will stick to this. Okay. So what I like to do is spray it, and then I have to make, I like pop it up, and then pop it up, and then cover it. Sometimes it takes a couple tries, so then it won't stick. It won't, and Voila. then it doesn't take the cheese away. Exactly, because the cheese always sticks to the dang top of it, and I hate that. Because then I'm like scraping the cheese off of it, because I want it all. You can, can you freeze these? Yep, you can, but make sure when you freeze these, do it in an airtight, or um, put, like if you use this, saran wrap it, then foil it. Okay. And that'll probably keep, I would, I'm gonna say a month in mm -hmm. the freezer. Mm -hmm. And then when you take it, if you're gonna do it from frozen, it's gonna take about an hour to cook. So you just pop it in you can frozen, just pop you don't freeze that. Mm -hmm. Or- But make sure you take off the, you know, take off the saran uh -huh. wrap. Or you could take it out and pop it in the fridge, let it be thaw, and, and then, then you put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so frozen, you cook it for an hour. Unfrozen, frozen. you cook it for 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then two minute broil. Two minute broil at the end. All right, we're gonna dig in. Can we dig in now? Can we yeah, try? Totally. Can we try some? Yes. I know Brandon wants to try some. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna do a little taste test because we can't wait for it to settle in. I know. So, so hold on, I'm gonna garnish mine with the little. Bag. I am, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna just grab it. Oh, see? See what happens? It falls apart. So mm. there, a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of tomato. It's all right, I'm losing everything. Son of a gun. All right. Mm. Good. So good. I swear, I love this thing. She's making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> like see how nice and pretty my bike was? <laughs> I'm trying to get a good scoop. You know, you put some cheese on this. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. Mm. <laughs> so good. But do you see why we have to let it rest? Because how runny it is. So make sure you let it rest. So good. My stepdad. This is his favorite mm -hmm. thing that I make. Okay. Okay. Let me let me oh, not right. take it away because I feel bad now. Now he's gonna take it. <laughs> But I did make you one. Okay, stop it. She's, she's taking all of mine. I, was, I need to take this one. This is for me. I already made her one. This is hers. All right, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Um, I love Noemi's cooking. And again, if you're a local in Albuquerque. In Albuquerque, yes. Albuquerque only, guys. Sorry. I like to keep it fresh. To keep it fresh and mm -hmm. keep it local. And it's yeah. important to do so. So, eFit ABQ. All her information is down below. You can email me, eFitABQ at gmail.com. You can. Check out my Instagram at EatFit, ABQ. And if you want to get the meat from ButcherBox.com to do the um, recipe at home, go to ButcherBox.com slash Michelle and um, you'll get a discount for your monthly subscription. We need to do a turkey segment. We should. Yes. Do you cook a good turkey? Oh, I brine in it? Mm. Fabulous. <laughs> All right, guys. Love you.